Hello class, it's Dr. Mike with an overview of Cord Lab 4, which currently at this recording uh, was, is, is at week 15 for CIS 2640. Um, give you a quick uh, just review and so you can go in with your Cord team and complete the task. So Cord Lab number four uh, is it's about security policies. So um, again, there's a lot of areas in IT um, especially, I mean, I'm sorry, in security, where it's not about, again, all this pen testing, can I, can I hack? Again, report writing, reviewing policies, these are critical skills that are going to make you a really valuable member of any um, InfoSec team. So, and a lot of them come from, in this case, those that review the scenario itself will tell you, come from actual uh, either pen test findings or security reviews. So, in this um, Cord Lab, we have a case of this. The scenario is, uh, it's this case, it's a healthcare corporation called Acme. Uh, the new CISO came on board, got the top pen test teams to perform full security audits. And there's these 15 findings here. So 15 findings from them. So as a team, again, as your core team, review all 15. And based upon vulnerability rankings, so go through them, and you can do the rankings separately, maybe on an Excel spreadsheet or whatever. But you want to go and create a document, and in those have the top five you think are the most, um, the highest risk for the company. And you recommend recommended policy to fix it. So again, out of the 15 above findings, as a team. Identify them, rate them, and then come up with the top five. And create a small table, the vulnerability, any recommended policy. And this could be a one sentence, you know. So for example, uh, passwords are too short. Again, I haven't read this actually right up here. Maybe it's one of them. But again, passwords are too short. So recommended policy, a strong password policy, justification, weak passwords, you know, and high risk, been known <laughs> to be used in... Um, password attacks, for example. So that's a quick example there. I would put that inside. Now, policy itself. So after these five so five things are created, are found, the five top high vulnerabilities, you're going to create a policy for each one. Again, split the work up. Uh, you're not alone, though. So you're, again, as before, you're not going to start with a blank slate. Up here, you'll see there's uh, both videos and a template, uh, as well as some supporting materials. So again, it's no surprise you see me before, and I'll say it again, it's a great resource, is SANS. So there's actually, the first link here is actually the development guide. Uh, it's 43 pages, so it's pretty big. Uh, definitely jump to the sections you think make sense. Uh, policy types, governing is a technical policy, um, which is a good thing to look at. Our policy is just, for example, a password policy. A password policy, is that just something that's a Governing policy, so you must have a strong password. But also, is there a technical aspect to this? Uh, any new systems we put into place are going to have to have strong password mechanisms. For example, Linux, PAM passwords, um, and so on. So you can see how something like passwords can go from just you have a strong password to like we're going to verify you have a strong password. So again, these things can span those two areas. Uh, again, you can flip through this. Pull out what you think is, is uh, needed. But also, there's actually uh, there's a video you can watch. Also, give you some help with that. And then from there's an actual template here, too. So this next link it takes you to this templates page. So again, you're not starting from a blank, blank slate. So let's say we want to do an email policy. Oh, here you go, password. <laughs> password construction guidelines. Click on that. Uh, there's several rooms here. There's a password protection policy, response plan policy, and encryption policy. So let's use the construction guidelines. There's a Word doc you can download. <clears throat> so again, <clears throat> so I would recommend as your team try to have the same format. And this is going to help you out. Look at the PDF here, though. So again, you can take this and almost start right here. And you actually have... Um, Definite terms, compliance policies. Let me zoom in a little bit here. 
So there you go, statement of guidelines. There's a strong password guidelines right there laid out. You can change these to make sense, change the scope or make sense. So again, this is just a, a, a working document you can use to help you with, let's say, for passwords. Again, the server security. Is there a server security policy in place? Um, so is there a software installation policy? That's a good one. Are people installing software they shouldn't be, especially on servers, which is a really bad, bad idea. Um, HIPAA policy. This is an important, uh, specifically that you are, in this scenario, a healthcare institution. So HIPAA is going to be very critical. So does HIPAA have certain workstation rules? So again, maybe one of the things in the list um, is about poor workstations. So again, you can almost use these, and it's okay. I know copy and paste sounds bad, but in the case where it comes to best practices, copy them, what makes sense, bring them over to your policy, and create one based from that. So again, a policy should be short, very easy to read for the end user, and very clear and concise. We don't want to obscure security with uh, an overabundance of policy drivel, per se. So. Um, so you can see here some good information. So again, a nice policy, easy to review, overview, purpose, scope, the policy itself, uh, compliance. A good thing about policy is about uh, an important aspect is compliance. Whereas if you don't follow the policy, there should be some um, some issues you face if you don't. For example, if you leave out confidential information on your desk, printed out, not locked up, yeah, a lot of times HR will be involved with that. So there's some enforcement you need to have Without enforcement, uh, policy is only half, um, really only half alive. You need to have some way to enforce them. Again, these could be technical controls, also could be dis uh, discipline themselves, so actual display actions. So again, great resource, SANS. Again, go back as a team, look at these 15, re um, these 15 findings from a pen test. Pick the top five, justify why you find these top five the most uh, critical, the most critical vulnerabilities, and then create a policy for each one based off these resources for you to start with, which being uh, templates and a development guide, and also a technical writing for security policies. That's actually a good one too there. And then no surprise, that's a SANS link. So the who, when, when, why, where, again, Subject verb. So some writing rules here. <laughs> Brevity is beauty. Exactly. Don't get too long. Short memos. Short policies. To the point. So, again, some of these are going to be for review. Some of these are going to be definitely for use in this project. So, again, this is a really great skill. Um, the ability to create a clear, concise policy. Is something I've done in infosec work. Um, Given to people who don't really understand. For example, what a cross-site script is, I might need to explain it and explain a mitigation needs to be used in development. So again, I've been to SANS a lot of times borrowing stuff, um, borrowing best practices and using those to help me create good policies. So same for this lab. Hope this helps you out and uh, good luck.